boys and girls, the book I have today is called Junie B. Jones and Some Sneaky Peaky Spying. There are eight chapters in the book, and I know that because I opened up the book to the table of contents. So let's get started. Chapter one, Sneaky Peaky Spying. My name is Junie B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice, except I don't like Beatrice. I just like B, and that's all. I go to kindergarten. Kindergarten is what comes before first grade, except for I don't know why it's called that silly word of kindergarten, because it should be called zero grade, I think. My teacher has the name of Mrs. She has another name too, but I just like Mrs. and that's all. Mrs. has short brown hair and long skirts of wool, and she smiles a real lot. Except for sometimes when I'm noisy, she claps her loud hands at me. It used to scare me very much, only then I got used to it, and now I don't even pay attention. I wish Mrs. lived next door to me. Then me and her would be neighbors and bestest friends. And also I could spy on her. Spying is when you are very quiet and you look at people through a peaky hole or crack or something. I am a very good spyer. That's because I have sneaky feet and my nose doesn't whistle when I breathe. Last Friday morning at Grandpa Miller's house, I hid it in the dirty clothes hamper. Then my grandpa came in the bathroom and I lifted up the lid a teeny bit and I peeked my eyes at him. And guess what? Grandpa Miller took his whole teeth out of his head. That's what. I popped right out of the hamper. Hey, Grandpa, how'd you do that crazy thing? I hollered. Then my grandpa screamed very loud, and he run out of the bathroom speedy quick. Grandpa Miller has high blood pressure, I think. Pretty soon, Mother hurried into the bathroom with angry feet. That's it, she yelled. No more spying. This is the last time I'm telling you. Do you hear me, Missy? Do you? Yes, I said, because you're hollering right in my ear. That's why. The mother took me home, except for she kept staying mad at me. Find something quiet to do, she said. Your baby brother has to take his morning nap. So then I thought and I thought about what to do, and I had a very great idea popped right into my head. First, I took off my loud shoes. Then I tippy-toed into baby Ollie's room in just my sock feet and I spied on him through the bars in his crib. Because what could be quieter than sneaky, peaky spying, of course? Only too bad for me, because that boring old baby just kept on sleeping and sleeping. And he wasn't being fun, and so that's what come accidentally blowed on his face. And I tickled his nose with a ribbon, and I shouted, Wake up! right in his ear. And guess what? Holly opened his eyes, that's what. Then he started crying very loud. And then mother ran into his room. Only she didn't even see me because I quick hide it in the closet. I smiled just to myself. I'm the bestest spyer in the whole wide world, I said inside my head. That's how come when I rode the bus to school that day, I did a little bit of bragging. I'm the best aspire in the whole world, I said to my bestest friend named Grace. Then I took off my shoes and I showed her my sneaky sock feet. See, I said, see how quiet they are? You can hardly even hear those guys. After that, I breathed in and out for her. And see, my nose doesn't whistle either, I said. That Grace smiled. Yeah, I'm good at spying too. I patted her. Yeah, only too bad, Grace, but you can't be as good as me because I said it first. That Grace did a mad breath at me. It's called a huffy, I think. I heard your nose whistle, Grace, I told her. Just then the bus got to school and me and that Grace raced each other to the playground. Except for she beated me, only it didn't count because I wasn't really racing. Then we played horses with my other bestest friend like Lucille, only pretty soon the bell rang and we all ran to room nine speedy quick. Mrs. was at the door waiting for us. Good afternoon, ladies, she said. Good afternoon, lady, I said back very polite. Then Mrs. smiled at me. That's because she's the nicest teacher I ever saw. And also, I wish me and her were bestest friends. And guess what else? I wish I could hide in her hamper. Chapter two, questions. Me and my bestest friend Lucille sit at my same table together. My table is where I sit up straight and I do my work and I don't talk to my neighbor, except I keep forgetting that part. I wonder where Mrs. lives, I whispered to Lucille very quiet. Shh, said Lucille. We can't talk or else we'll get in trouble. And anyway, you're not allowed to know where she lives because it's a secret. Says who? I asked. 
says my brother that too, and he's in third grade, and he says teachers have to keep their house a secret or else kids might go there and throw rotten tomatoes. I did a huffy at her. <sighs> yeah, only I don't want to throw rotten tomatoes, Lucille, I explained. I just want to hide in her hamper, and that's all. I don't care, she said. You're still not allowed, because my brother said so, and he knows more than you do, so there. I made an angry f I made an angry face. So there is not a nice word, Lucille. Then I made a fist at her, except Mrs. saw me, and so I had to unfold it. After that, I behaved myself very good, and I sat up straight, and I did all of my work. Work is when you use your brain and a pencil. Only sometimes I accidentally use the eraser too hard, and a big hole rubs in my paper. Hey, I did beautifully today, I called out, because guess what? No hole, that's what. Mrs. came to my table. She put a gold star on my work. You did do beautifully, Junie B, she said. Maybe I'll hang this on the wall for a grandparents' day on Monday. Would you like that? Yes, I said. Only I keep on forgetting how come those guys are coming to this place. Then Mrs. explained to me all about grandparents' day again. She said, our grandparents are coming for a visit, and we get to show them room nine, and also we get to have freshments together. Mrs. said, freshments are cookies and a beverage. I raised my hand. Yeah, but I don't think I'm allowed to have the kind of drink named a beverage, because I'm only allowed to have milk and juice, and that's all. Mrs. looked up at the ceiling with her eyes. I looked up there, too, but I didn't see anything. How many of you think you can bring cookies on Monday? Said Mrs. I can, I can, I hollered very excited. Because my mother is the bestest cookie baker in the whole world. That's why, except for one time she accidentally forgot they were in the oven and the fireman had to come to her house. Mrs. laughed. And I don't know why, because that's not a funny story. After that, she gave me a note for mother. It was some writing about baking cookies, I think. If your mother has any questions, please tell her to call me, said Mrs. <gasps> Just then, I had a great idea. Hey, I said, maybe me and mother can bring the cookies to your house, and so then I can see where you live. Mrs. rumpled my hair. You don't have to come to my house, Junie B. Just bring the cookies to school on Monday morning. I smiled very sweet. Yeah, only I still want to see where you live, I said. Then Mrs. turned around, and she walked back to her desk. That's how come I had to follow her. Do you have the rich kind of house or the regular kind of house? I asked her. Can I? Because I just have the regular kind of house, except for mother wants the rich kind, only daddy said lots of luck. Mrs. pointed to my chair. That means sit down, I think. Yeah, but do you have a daddy that lives at your house too? Are there any pictures of him in your wallet? Let's look there, okay? Do you have a secret compartment? Because my grandfather, Grandpa Miller has one of those things with 50 bucks in it, only don't tell grandma. Mrs. took my hand, then me and her walked back to my table. Yeah, only guess what I'm wondering now. Now I'm wondering what your bedtime is, because my bedtime is when the little hand is on the seven and the big hand is on the six. Only I don't like that bedtime, because I'm not even tired yet, of course. Mrs. put her finger up to her lips. That's enough, Junie B, she said. I mean it. I want you to settle down now. Then she went right back to the front of the room, and she didn't answer any of my questions. Because guess why? Mrs. is a secret mystery guy, that's why. Chapter 3. Secret Mystery Guy me and my bestest friend Grace rode the bus home together. That's when I told her about Mrs. and her secret house. Mrs. is a secret mystery guy, I said, because she won't answer any of my questions, and so now I have curiosity about her. That Grace wrinkled her eyebrows. Me too, she said. Now I have curiosity about her too. I patted her again. Yeah, only too bad, Grace, but you can't have as much as me, because I said it first, remember that? That Grace did another huffy breath at me. Whoops, I said. Your nose is still whistling, Grace, I said. A few minutes later, I got off the bus, and I ran to my house like a speedy rocket. Grandma, Grandma, I shouted very excited. It's me, it's me, Junie B. Jones. I'm home from my school. Grandma Miller babysits me and baby Ollie when mother is at work. She was in the kitchen feeding Ollie sprained peas. Guess what, Grandma, guess what? My teacher is a secret mystery guy, and she won't tell me where she lives, only I want to go to her house very bad. Grandma Miller shushed me. There's no need to shout, Junie B, she said. I'm right here. Yeah, only I can't help it, Grandma, because I have curiosity about her. Grandma Miller did a little smile. Curiosity killed the cat, you know, she said. Then my mouth went open and my eyes got very big, too. What cat, Grandma? Where did the curiosity kill it? Was it in the street by my school? Because I saw a squished cat in the street by my school, only Polly Ellen Puffer said it got squashed by the ice cream truck. Grandma Miller looked at me for a second. Then she went to the sink and she took an aspirin. Just then, I heard a noise at the front door and its name is Mother was home from work. 
Mother, mother, I have an important note from Mrs. because you and me are going to bake delicious cookies and then we can take them to her house and see where she lives. Mother read the note. The note says to take the cookies to school, Junie B, not to your teacher's house. Yeah, only I already know that, but my teacher is a secret mystery guy and she won't tell me where she lives. And so you and me have to find it ourselves. Mother shook her head. No way, toots, she said. Yes way, I hollered. We have to, because now I've got curiosity in me and I have to find out where her house is or else Grandma said I'm going to get run over by an ice cream truck. Then Mother did a frown at Grandma and Grandma took another aspirin. Your teacher is not a secret mystery guy, Junie B, said Mother. She's just a regular person with a regular family, and there's no way that you and I are going to bother her at her house. I stomped my foot. Yes, we are. We are too, because I want to. That's why. After that, I got sent into my room. Because of no shouting and no stamping my foot, only I never heard of that rule before. I shut my door very angry. Then I put my head under my pillow, and I called Mother the name of Pewee Head. And guess what else? I said very quiet. Teachers are not regular people, so they are. Ha ha. So before we start reading chapter four, let's review um, some of the things that have happened so far in the book. So Junie B and her school, they're going to have a grandparents day and grandparents are going to come and it's going to be like a little party or celebration. Junie B's teacher, Mrs., asks Junie B's mom to make cookies. And Junie B wants her mom to deliver the cookies to Mrs. House because she's super curious. She thinks that her teacher is like a mystery and she's so curious about her. Um, and then the grandma said a phrase. It's called an expression. It, it's something that isn't really real. Grandma said, curiosity killed the cat. And that's just an expression. It doesn't mean a cat died. Um, but Junibi, of course, thought that that was real. And so now she is all confused about that. And she told her mom that if she doesn't figure out anything about Mrs. that she's going to get run over by an ice cream truck. Junie is kind of crazy. But anyway, that's where we are. So chapter four, cookie mix and other stuff. The next day was Saturday. Saturday is the, the day me and my mother go to the grocery store. I have rules at that place. Like no hollering the words, I want ice cream. And no calling mother the name of Big Meanie when she won't buy it. And no eating a bag of marshmallows that doesn't belong to you. Or else the store guy yanks it away from you and he says, eating is the same thing as stealing, young lady. Then he takes you to mother and she has to pay for the whole entire bag. Except for I don't know why, because I only ate three of those soft guys and that's all. The carts of the grocery store have seats in them. That's where the babies sit. Only not me, because big girls get to walk all by themselves. And guess what else? One time mother even let me push the whole big cart without any help. Except for then, some baked beanies got knocked off their shelf, and a grandma got her foot caught in my tire, and so now I have to wait until I'm bigger. My favorite aisle is where the cookies are. That's because sometimes there's a lady at the table there, and she gives me and mother cookie samples, and we don't even have to pay for them. Their names is freebies, I think. Only too bad for me, because this time that lady wasn't there. Darn it, I said, disappointed. No freebie lady. Mother smiled. That's okay. When we get home, we're going to bake our own cookies for Grandparents' Day, remember? Won't that be fun? She asked. I made my shoulders go up and down. That's because I was still mad at her for not taking me to my teacher's house, of course. What kind of cookie mix do you want, said Mother. I did a frown at her. I don't even want to bake cookies anymore, because you still won't take me to where Mrs. lives. Mother rumpled my hair. Staying mad isn't going to change things, Junie B, she said. Now, do you want to pick out the cookie mix, or shall I? Then mother picked out some cookie mix and she gave it to me and I throwed it in the cart very hard. Thank you, said mother. You're not welcome, I said. After that, mother took me outside of the store and me and her had a little talk. A little talk is when mother is mad at me and she says, who do you think I am, Missy? And exactly how do you think she's going to put up with me? Then I have to say apology to her. Apology is the words, I'm sorry. Except for you don't actually have to mean it because nobody can even tell the difference. That's not true. A little after the talk, we went back into the store. Shall we try again, said Mother. Then she gave me another box of cookie mix and I put it in the cart very nice. That's better, she said. Thank you. You're not welcome, I said inside of my head. Then I smiled just to myself because Mother can't even hear me inside of there. After that, me and her went around the corner and I saw my most favorite thing in the whole wide world and its name is the water fountain. Hey, I need a drink, I said very excited. 
Then I ran right over there and I hopped up on the little step. Need some help, said mother. No, I said, because I'm almost six years old, that's why. And so I already know how to work this big guy. And here's another thing I know, I said. No putting your mouth in the water spout or else germs will get inside of you. I smiled very proud. Polly Allen Puffer told me that. Then I bended my head over the water fountain and I drank for a real long time. Hurry up, Junie B, said mother. I need to get the shopping done. I wiped my mouth off with my arm. Yeah, only I can't hurry up or else I might get a stomachache and spit up water because a boy named William did that on the playground yesterday. Mother looked at her watch. Okay, well, I'm going to be right here in the cereal aisle. As soon as you're finished drinking, come directly back to me. Okie dokie, I said very happy. Then I turned around and drank and drank and drank. Except for then I started feeling a little bit sickish. And so I had to sit down on the step and rest my water. That's when the big front doors of the grocery store opened. And guess what? My eyes almost popped out of my head. That's what. Because I saw a big shock. And its name was Mrs. My real life teacher named Mrs. was at the grocery store. Chapter 5. Sickish. Mrs. didn't see me. That's because I hide behind the water fountain speedy fast. And guess what? She had a man with her. And I never even saw that guy before. Hey, who the heck is that? I said just to myself. Then I run to my fastest to the cereal aisle to tell mother what I saw. Only all of a sudden I remembered about how she told me no more spying. And so maybe I might get in trouble with her, I think. That's how come I stopped running and I started to go back to peek at Mrs. some more. But mother had already spotted me. Hey, what are you, where are you going? She said at me, come here. Yeah, only I can't come there, I said, because I just remembered something very important and it's called I'm not drinking yet. I'm not done drinking yet. Then I run right back to the water fountain. Only Mrs. and the strange man were already disappeared. Shoot, I said, where do those sneaky peeps go? After that, I had to look all over the store for those guys. First, I looked at where the chocolate milk was. Then I looked at where the pischetti and tomato sauce was. And I also looked at where the delicious candy was. Only guess what? I finally found them. At the stinky vegetables, that's where. I quick ducked down and hid behind a corner. Then I did some sneaky peeky spying on them. I saw Mrs. picking out some yucky blacky broccoli and some stewy pewy tomatoes and also the kind of vegetable named zucchini. Except for then, the strange man snatched the zucchini right out of her hands, and he tried to put it back on the shelf. Only Mrs. grabbed it back again, and she pretended to hit him on the head with it, and then they both started laughing very much. And that is when a very terrible thing happened. And it's called, Mrs. and the strange man did a big smoochy kiss. And it was in front of the whole entire everybody. I covered my eyes. That's because I was too ashamed of her, of course. And a kind of teacher shouldn't do that. After that, I peeked at my eyes between my fingers. And I saw Mrs. standing at the grapes. And she picked up a bunch of the green kind. And she pulled some grapes right off the top of it. And that's when the most terriblest thing happened. Because just then, Mrs. put the grapes in her mouth. And she ate them. Mrs. ate the grapes, and she didn't even pay for them. Oh, no, I whispered very upset. Oh, no. Oh, no. Because eating is the same thing as stealing, remember? And teachers aren't supposed to do stealing. Teachers are supposed to be perfecter than that because they have to set a good example for the little children. After that, I felt very sickish inside of my stomach. On account of Mrs. didn't even get caught and learn her lesson. Because nobody saw what she did. Not the store guy. Not the strange man. Nobody. Nobody except for me. Before I start chapter six, let's talk about what's happened so far. So Junie B really wants to spy on her teacher and figure out everything about her. She was at the grocery store and she saw her teacher. And her teacher came in with what Junie B called a strange man. Um... But was that man really strange? Um, think about it. Do grown-ups ever go with other grown-ups to the grocery store? Maybe it's a friend, um, a husband, a um, boyfriend, a partner. Um, but when they were there, Junie B saw two things that bothered her. The first thing was that Mrs. did a smoochy kiss with that man. Um, and this is where I usually talk to the kids and say, have your grown-ups ever given you a kiss? That's a normal thing, right? Kisses are fine, right? And the second thing that bothered Junie B was that Mrs. took a couple of grapes and ate them before she bought them. Now, that's kind of 
maybe not the best thing to do, but Juni B is very bothered by it. And now she's feeling very upset. So let's read chapter six. Sque squeezy lips. I didn't tattletale on Mrs. That's cause if I told mother, I would get in trouble for spying. And if I told the store guys, Mrs. might go to jail. And so I just keep it a secret inside my head cause nobody can see secrets inside your head. Not even if they look in your ears. On Sunday, Grandma and Grandpa Miller came to our house for dinner. Only I couldn't talk to them very much. That's because secrets are very slippery. And I didn't want it to slip out of my mouth by accident. Why so quiet tonight, Junie B? Grandma Miller asked at the table. Cat got your tongue? My mouth went wide open. I'm going to pause for a second. Just like curiosity killed the cat, cat got your tongue is an expression. That just means you can't really talk very well or you're trying to keep something inside and don't know what to say. My mouth went wide open. What cat, Grandma? Is it the same cat that got killed by the ice cream truck? How come it wants to get my tongue? Did his tongue get squished in the accident? Grandma Miller made a face and then she didn't eat her roast beef anymore. Mother looked surprised at me. You sure did, did get chatty all of a sudden. Does this mean you're not mad about the cookies anymore? And so then I remembered to stop talking again or else my secret might slip out. And guess what else? I squeezed my lips very tight. Even the next day, when I was on the school bus to school, my lips still stay squeezed. Hi, Junie B, said my bestest friend, Grace. I did a wave at her. That Grace frowned at me. How come you're not saying hi? You have to say hi, it's the rules. Except for I still didn't say hi. And so then she called me the name of Big Stinky. And then when we got to school, that Grace told Lucia I was a big meanie, and so those two played horses all by themselves and not me. That's how come I finally had to sing something very loud at them. I've got a secret, ha, 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 I sang. That Grace put her hands on her hips. So, she said, we don't care, do we, Lucille? Except for just that Lucille ran over to me speedy quick. Because she cared, that's why. If you tell me your secret, I'll be your best friend, she said. Yeah, only I can't, Lucille, I explained. Because if I tell you my secret, Mrs. might get in big trouble, and so I have to keep it inside my head. Lucille did a frown at me. It's not good to keep secrets inside your head, Junie B, she said. My brother says keeping secrets inside your head makes pressure in there, and pretty soon your head blows up. My eyes got very big at her. Oh no, I hollered really upset. Then I hold on my head real tight with my hands, and I run around speedy, speedy fast to the nurse's office, because she has band-aids that hold your head together, I think. My head's gonna blow! My head's gonna blow! I yelled at the nurse. She jumped from her desk and hurried over to me. What's wrong, Junie B? Do you have a bad headache? She said. No, I have a bad secret. It's about Mrs. Only I can't tell anybody and now there's pressure in my head and so I need a band-aid or else I'm gonna explode. The nurse said, come down to me. Then she put a band-aid on my head and me and her went to the principal's office. Principal is the boss of the school. Me and him know each other very good. That's because... What's wrong, Juni B? Do you have a bad headache? She said. No, I have a bad secret. It's about Mrs. Only I can't tell anybody, and now there's pressure in my head, and I need a, and I need a band aid, or else I'm gonna explode. The nurse said, "Calm down to me." Then she put a band aid on my head, and me and her went to the principal's office. Principal is the boss of the school. Me and him know each other very good. That's because I keep getting unsent down there, and so now I'm not even afraid of that guy. Principal sat me in a big wood chair. Good afternoon, Juni B. He said, "What's the trouble today?" Good afternoon, I said back. My head's gonna blow. Principal frowned his eyes at me. Why do you even think that? He said. I did a bit of squirming. Cause I got a secret in there, that's why, I said. Principal sat down at his big desk. He folded his hands. Maybe if you tell me your secret, I can help you, he said. Yeah, only I can't talk, I told him. Principal looked disappointed at me. But I thought you and I were pals, he said. We are, I said. I'm not even afraid of you. Principal did a chuckle. Good, that's good, he said. Then why don't you tell me what's bothering you? That's when I did a huffy breath at him. Because the guy wasn't listening to me, of course. Yeah, only I already said I can't talk, remember that? Because if I talk, then I might accidentally tell you that my teacher stole the grapes at the grocery store. And then she might have to go to jail. And so that's how come I have to keep it a secret inside my head, that's all. 
I smoothed my skirt. The end, I said. Then I squeezed my lips together very tight or else my secret might slip out. Only guess what? I think it already did. Chapter seven, sour grapes. Principal called Mrs. to come to his office. Only I didn't even know he was gonna do that sneaky thing. That's how come I had to pull my skirt way over my head or else Mrs. would see me there and she would know I tattletailed on her. Don't do that, said Principal. Yeah, only I'm allowed, I said from underneath my skirt, because I have on new red tights and also boxer shorts. After that, Principal went out of his office and I heard my teacher's voice outside the door. Then I quick got down from my big wood chair and I hide it under Principal's giant desk because I was scared of what's going to happen, that's why. I stayed quiet for lots of minutes. Then I heard feet come back into the office. And so I made my breath very quiet. Junie, Junie B. Jones, said Principal. She might be hiding, said Mrs. She's good at that, you know. And so I just had to think of something very quick or else they might come looking for me, I think. Yes, only Judy B. Jones isn't hiding, I said in a scary voice. Judy B. Jones had to go home. Only don't call her mother or she might get mad at you and crack your head open. After that, feet walked very fast around the desk. It was principal. Come out of there right now, young lady. I peeked my eyes at him. Shoot, I said very quiet. Then I had to sit in the big wood chair again, and Mrs. sat down next to me, except for I didn't look at her, only she might be making a fist at me. Good afternoon, Junie B., she said in a very nice voice. I did a gulp. I think you and I have, oh, sorry, this is Mrs. I think you and I need to have a little talk, she said. Then my eyes got a teeny bit of wet in them, because a little talk means I'm gonna get yelled at. Yeah, only I try not to tattletale on you, I said very quick. Because I didn't want you to go to jail for stealing grapes, and so I kept it a secret inside my head, and I didn't talk, and Grandma Miller thought a dead cat got my tongue. Only, today, Lucille said my head was going to blow. And so that's how come I had to run to the nurses for a band-aid, and she took me to principal, and then my secret accidentally slipped out of my lips. Mrs. dried my eyes with a tissue. It's okay, Junie B., she said. I'm not angry at you. I just need to know what you saw me do at the grocery store. Can you tell me what you saw? Then she said the words, exactly. I made my voice very whispering. I exactly saw you eat grapes, I told her. Except for you didn't pay the store man for them. You just put them in your mouth and ate them. And that's called the worst, the word of stealing, I think. After that, I hided my head under my skirt again. You don't have to hide, Gina B, said Mrs. I'm the one who should be hiding. I'm the one who took the grapes. I peeked my eyes over my skirt at her. Then Mrs. did a little smile and she explained about what happened. Two weeks ago, I bought some grapes at the grocery store, she said. But when I got home, I discovered they were so sour and no one in my family would eat them. So this week when my husband and I went back to the store, I thought I'd be smart and taste a couple of grapes before I bought them. I raised my eyebrows. Is that the rules? Mrs. shook her head. No, she said, that's not the rules. I should have told the grocery man about my sour grapes, and then I should have asked him if I could sample one or two. But I didn't do that, and it was right of you to worry when you saw me eating them without paying for them. It was, I said. Mrs. smiled again. Of course it was, she said. It shows you know right from wrong, and it also shows that teachers make mistakes just like everyone else. Teachers aren't perfect, Junie B. No one is perfect. After that, I felt relief in me, because no more secret, that's why. Yeah, only guess what else I saw, I said very happy. I saw you and your strange man do a big smoochy kiss, and it was right in front of the whole entire everybody. Only you didn't even know I was spying on you, because I'm not actually allowed to do that sneaky thing. Only my mother never even find it out. I smiled very proud of myself, except Mrs. didn't smile back, and Principal didn't smile back too. Because guess why? Another secret just slipped out. That's why. All right, before we go on to the last chapter, chapter eight, let's talk about that strange man Judy B keeps calling him. Do you remember earlier, Mrs. said it was her husband. It said, when my husband and I went back to the store. It's not a strange man. It's just her husband. Oh, Junie B. Chapter eight, last chapter. Grandparents' day. Mrs. went back to room nine. That's because the bell rang to start kindergarten, of course. Only principal didn't let me go too. He said to stay in my wood chair. Then he called mother on the telephone and he told her all about the grocery store and also about my sneaky peeky spying. Principal is a squealer. 
After that, mother said she wanted to talk to me. Only when I said hi, she didn't even say hi back. She said she wasn't very happy with me, Missy. And no more spy means no more spying. And we would talk about this after her work. Then mother said she never wants to get any more phone calls from the principal. Did I understand? Did I? Did I? I looked at principal. Mother says not to call her anymore, I told him. Then mother did a loud groan on the phone, except I don't know why. After that, me and her hanged up. And principal said I could go back to room nine. So I run there speedy quick. Only too bad for me. Because I got there too late to sing My Country Tizzy the Sweet Land of Liver Free, which is my favorite flag song. And so then I had to sit down at my table, that's all. I showed Lucille my band-aid. See, my head's not blown up, I said very happy. Too bad, said a boy named Meanie Jim. I made a fist at him. Then me and him got into a scuffle. A scuffle is a school word for I accidentally tore his shirt. Only well, guess what? I didn't even get in trouble. Because just then the grandparents came to your nine for Grandparents Day. Hey, there's mine, there's mine! I hollered very excited. Mine's the grandpa with the bald head! Mine too, said a girl named Charlotte. Mine too, said my boyfriend named Ricardo. Then a grandma with blonde hair came in. And she had long red fingernails and dangling earrings with jewels on them. That's my Nana, said Lucille. I smiled at her. Your Nana looks like a money bag, Lucille, I said. After that, another grandma came in and she ran over to that gym I don't like and she just tried to hug him real tight. Only that mean gym kept on standing there and he didn't even hug her back. I tapped on her. I will hug you, I said. So then me and her hugged real tight. I don't like your grandboy, I said very sweet. Just then, Mrs. Clatcher lot hands together and she made the grandparents sit down at the back of the room. Then the children talked all about what we do in room nine. It's fun here, I said, said my bestest friend that Grace. We learn to count and to read and to wash our hands when we go to the bathroom. And we learn recess and snacks and art, said Ricardo. Art is my favorite, I called out. Only my art didn't get hanged up because I painted a horse and his head turned out like a fat wiener sausage. And so I had to tear it up and stomp on it with my shoes. Then that mean Jim did a cuckoo sign at me. And it was right in front of his entire grandparents. Only everybody makes mistakes, I said. Right, Mrs. Wright? Because Saturday you kissed a strange man at the grocery store and then when you stole a bunch of grapes and even teachers make mistakes, right? Mrs. Face went funny and her skin turned the color of reddish and her voice couldn't say any words. She's embarrassed. How come you're not talking, Mrs.? I hollered out. Does the dead cat got your tongue? Just then Grandma Miller made a loud laugh in the back of the room. Then I heard my grandpa laugh too. And pretty soon, lots of other grandparents were laughing and laughing. Hey, it sounds happy in this place, I hollered. After that, Mrs. didn't look so reddish anymore. Then we got out the refreshments and Grandma Miller helped me put out my cookies on a plate. Mrs. made an announcement to room nine and she said that only two cookies apiece for the children. Except I ate four delicious chocolate ones and nobody even saw me. That's not stealing though. That's called extras. After the refreshments, the grandparents had to go home to their houses, and so I hugged my grandma and grandpa very much, and then I hugged that mean Jim's grandma too, and I hugged the seal's money bags, Nana. I love your earrings, I said. Then Mrs. saw me being polite, and she smiled very nice at me. Mrs. has white teeth. They are just like Grandpa Miller's teeth, only hers don't come out, I think. Except I'm not for sure positive, and so guess what? I still wish I could hide in her hamper, that's what. Oh, Junie B. Sneaky peeky spying, spying is not a good idea. We finished the book today, boys and girls. So I guess you'll find out what the next one is next week. Bye.